I'm so excited to be with you. You are such an amazing woman, and you have been working for such amazing magazines like Harper's Bazaar, Elle, Marie Claire, Glamour, and also you have written different books about fashion. Yes, I have four books. They are all about image, fashion, luxury, and stuff. And I'm, you know, one of these fashion lovers for sure. Wow, it is such a pleasure to Thank be with you, you in this interview, talking about this amazing exhibition. Uh, we have the opportunity to go into the history of Condé Nast and her publications over a hundred years with this, uh, all these photographers that we have been part of the, of the history. And I'm very proud of you <laughs> to be part, you know, that you're part of this exhibition. It's amazing. It really is. It's not usual that to see material from both companies, you know, it's, it's actually very, very different from anything that I've seen. I hope it, this is the first one. Um, but regardless of that, it's, it covers a long time, maybe a hundred years or so, of history, of images, of designers, of course. But the best thing is that all the photographers that are, have been chosen for this are amazingly different. Like they all have their own style, their own narrative. It's it's great. Yeah, and one of the things that it's uh, really cool about this is that, as you said, like to have the opportunity to talk about the two big editorials, Condé Nast and Hearst, also is the opportunity to talk about the fashion editors and the photographers that we have worked for both, as yourself, as myself, we have worked for both because to be able to talk about the different styles or the different changes that have happened during all these years is a great opportunity. And we have also like amazing images that some photographers um, gave us to, to use on, on, on the exhibition and for this interview. And we have also the opportunity to talk with some of these photographers that are still alive, like photography, uh, like legends like Melvin Sokolsky, mm -hmm. that he, he has been one of the photographers that changed uh, photography in the 60s. And it's very memorable, his uh, fashion story with the bubbles. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember you told me that not too long time ago, you did a special issue in Harper's Bazaar in Espanol about the, the spheres of Melvin Sokolsky. Can you tell me something about this article sure. that you did about him? Sure, I just wrote you know, a couple of months ago, just when the pandemic started, I, um, we always had, and they still do, um, a, a section called Retro, which was bringing an, an image from the last, you know, years, sometimes lots of years, um, like going back to the past and bringing one of those pictures and talking about that, the picture. And we selected the bubble because we thought, you, you know, we are like in a bubble now in the pandemic. You, you have to be in your cocoon, in your little house, apartment, or, you know, in your little thing with your mask, and you are kind of uh, isolated from, from society. And we took that picture, and I wrote a piece of it, and now we have the whole thing. Not only that, we can talk to Melvin, and we can figure out how he did that, because it's amazing. I mean, he did not have Photoshop by then, you know? This was like at the beginning. So you tell me what you have seen about that. Well, his image is about, well, I love the work of Melvin. He's mm -hmm. very versatile, and uh, he has this surreal style that I love. And some of the most known work of him are the bubbles, but I have seen many other pictures where he builds like sets and somehow he makes the composition without Photoshop. And I was wondering like, how did he do that? I know. Right? And um, it's very interesting about how photography and fashion take place in the history of the world, because it's a reflection of, of what is happening, right? the reflection of uh, the politics, the reflection of fashion, um, things like what we are living now, as you said, like with the pandemic, it's a reflection of how we adapt to that. And talking about that, having the opportunity of talking about all the photographers that we have been part all along all these years, it's the opportunity to talk about also how it has transformed in technology and the, um, the trends also in, in fashion. Can you imagine when the photographers had to carry those 
big cameras, and they didn't, you know, they didn't have the mobility, they didn't have the airplanes that go really fast, or the cars that come and go, you know, it's, it's been amazing for you guys now, a days with the digital area. But now, um, I guess there's a lot of um, pressure into post-production more so than to pre-production and during the production. And I think we have to balance this out. Yeah, it's a, as you say, it's a, it's a balance. Um, technology has two sides. It brings you the possibility to do more, but at the same time, everybody is expecting to have the results faster. And by having the results faster, it makes also to have less of the time to to plan, mm -hmm. to plan in advance. Uh, one of the, w what I love about the fashion editorials, and especially the great fashion editorials of, of the history, are the ones that they express a whole story. And some of them have been made in a single day, but many of them have taken two or three weeks or more to, 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 do. Yeah. to do, right? Like, just the fact, and it's not about just the size of the cameras, it's about also the technology in a bigger scale. Like I was, uh, the other day I was watching uh, a documentary about uh, Richard Avedon, mm -hmm. and a story he did for Harper's Bazaar, where he had to travel to India and to Egypt. And to do that, it was something that it was possible on that time because of the jets, which didn't exist a couple of, decades before, and it was really difficult to, to travel around the world to do the stories. Besides the technology, like having all these big cameras made it more difficult to do a, a photo shoot. They had to be in a studio to have everything uh, more prepared. Mm -hmm. And it was the same with the clothing, like the, the fashion on the 30s, 40s, it was I wouldn't say more glamorous because it is very glamorous today, but it could be more complicated to set up the, the shirt. Because the, the clothes were complicated. They had a lot of volume, you know. Now it's more simplistic. I mean, not all of them, of course, but it tends to be more minimalistic in one sense, no? Yeah, so talking about the different styles, uh, this gives us the opportunity to talk about different photographers uh, through all the years with different, with different styles. We have photographers from all around the world. We have photographers from China, from Russia, Poland, everywhere. And we are from Mexico. So it's a big opportunity also for us to talk about the work that we have done with these amazing magazines as well. Lucy, that you that have worked for so many different magazines, how different is to work from one magazine to another, even if they are from the same editorial as Condé Nast or, or Hearst. Um, do you kind of keep the same line of working in your own way, or do you really have to adapt very specific to a certain magazine? You definitely have to adapt. Um, you have to respect what the magazine is about. The voice of the magazine, the DNA of the magazine is so important. And not all the, the editors-in-chief respect that, but you can tell, you know, you can tell if um, uh, Harper's Bazaar is very Marie Claire Harper's Bazaar. It has happened, you know. And sometimes when you think um, that you, you move from glamour to Vogue or you move to Marie Claire to Elle, you have to bring something that belongs to you, which is your point of view. But your point of view has to change wherever you work. Because it's not about Lucy Lara or Anna Winter or anybody. It's about the magazine. You just have to bring it, you know, into your level. Like, level it up. And to know? bring your own personality in it. You have to, ah, uh, yes. It, it, is, it has it, to permeate. Yeah. It's a great, uh, a big challenge. I do like that challenge. Like, to me, working for different magazines, like working for... Cosmopolitan and Harper's Bazaar, it's on the other side of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fashion, but fashion styling is so different, the attitude of the model is so different. And it has to be different all over, no? The whole narrative has yeah, to be Yeah, I like, I like to be like a chameleon, 
looking to give that essence of the magazine. That's one of the things that I like about photography, that this is part of like um, the lighting um, styles that I do, like all the techniques that, that I use to be able to, to achieve that, that mood on, on the image. It's, uh, it's really, really great to have the opportunity to work with different magazines, to create different stories in a, in a different way. Do you have any particular magazine that you would say this is more Lucy Lara or I like more what I do on these magazines because it brings me the possibility to, to create more or to express more myself? Well, I have to say, having worked in, in Vogue for a while and Glamour, for instance, in Condé Nast, and then having worked for, for Harper's Bazaar, Harper's Bazaar gave me a lot of freedom in the sense that you can really get wild there. And I like wildness. I mean, I think fashion needs a little bit of wildness. And how about when you are um, commission a story, like something that you have to adopt. Like I have the idea, I have the clothes, I have the girl, I have the whole talent, and I bring you in. How do you work with that? I work through that through all my life in, the, <laughs> in terms of <laughs> having to, like wishing to, uh, wishing to be more myself on that. And I think that's one of the challenges that we have mm -hmm. as photographers, that to be able to stand out and to be ourselves and not part of something that is already thought. And um, because it's, it's about the connection that, that we do as a group. But once we have an idea, I believe it's a, it's a teamwork. And the vision as photographers, the vision and mission that we have is to create that it's something original. And mm -hmm. to be able to create something original has to come from, from us. If we mm -hmm. have to follow like a line, then we start getting into a more commercial line that it might go to, to a way that doesn't really create something very, very different. So it's, it's, it's a challenge of egos too, because working with so many people, so many artists, like artists, we have egos. <laughs> and to be able to kind of balance all of that. All the, and to all be the able, egos in, this, in yeah, the set. And the egos and the ideas, they are great, but it doesn't work when everyone has their own and they are not going together. Once we are able to put the ideas together and we have the same mission to do something in particular, then is when things go really well, great. Right. Mm -hmm. They go to, they, they become something uh, very special. Yes, definitely. So I think that this is a really an amazing story because having all this talent from different places, different budgets, different uh, kind of uh, point of views, but also having them together in, in this time during the pandemic and, and doing all this, you know, like setting up when we cannot travel, when we cannot see each other, we had to kind of figure it out. And I think that the crew has done a really an amazing job and I'm very happy to be doing this with you because at least we can try to join the thing together and I'll come up with the, the concept and the idea and, um, and, and just applaud them, you know? It is. Um, so Lucy, it's really amazing to, to have this opportunity to talk about yes about this Thanks. exhibition and about all, all the photographers' history, the fashion history. So I'm very happy to be here with you and uh, to be able to, to have your point of view on this interview. And me too. I'm very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Lucy. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs>